Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to start talking about Carry Look Everywhere Edition. Now, a Carry Look Everywhere adder, for the most part, is just a standard Carry Look Head adder, which directly implements the Carry Look Head equation, for the most part. So, I'm going to briefly revisit the Carry Look Ahead sort of equation chart, I guess you could say. Before I go into what specifically makes a Carry Look Everywhere adder, because I really think that'll help you grasp what exactly it is and why it works. So, this right here is the Carry Look Ahead equation for three carries. So, for example, carry zero. The only thing they can get that is the original generate, general z or generate zero. So, yeah, for carry one, if I get generate one, well, I've generated a carry signal, or I can propagate over the previous generate. So, yeah. And I'm going to sort of gloss over this a little bit because I've already talked about this in the carry look ahead video. So if you want to know more about the carry look ahead equation, look there. I'm just sort of trying to briefly go over this to give you a refresher and hopefully understand my diagram a little bit. So, carry two. Again, you could propagate generate zero all the way over. You could propagate generate one over or you get another generate. And that's the way the carry look head equation works in a really simplified manner. It's just, yeah, you can either generate a carry signal for that bit, or you can propagate over one of the previously generated carry signals. And you might be wondering why I'm bringing this up again. And here's why. This is most of what a carry look, ahead, or carry look everywhere adder is. The only thing that separates a carry look ahead adder from a carry look everywhere adder is a carry look everywhere adder has two very distinct defining features. And the first of those features is it attempts to evaluate all of these different terms I have on the chart all at once, all simultaneously. So it'll calculate propagate 2 and propagate 1 and generate 0. At the same time, it calculates propagate 3 and generate 2, and propagate 1 and generate 0. So, yeah, it attempts to calculate every single possible carry all at the same time. That's why it's called Carry Look Everywhere. It looks at every single carry at the exact same time. The second defining characteristic is it attempts to reuse calculated data as much as possible without introducing delay. So, for example, if I calculate propagate 1 and generate 0, I'd try to use the same hardware that's doing that to make that part of the thing that calculates propagate 2 and propagate 1 and generate 0, as long as that doesn't introduce delay. So, I, those are really the two defining characteristics of a carry look everywhere adder. It tries to calculate every single possible carry term all at once, and it tries to reuse calculations as much as possible without introducing delay. And I can talk more about it, but I really think the best way to understand a Carry Look Everywhere adder is to build one and see that sort of mentality in action. So I'm just going to sort of do that and show you how it works mostly along the way. Now, just like any adder, it all starts with the XNOR, and it's, I'm just going to use a basic variant of Tommy's XNOR. I'm going to build it here just so you know what I'm doing, but for the most part, I'm going to be doing the XNORs off camera because, whoops, because it's really not the focus of this video. The focus of this video is, well, the Carry Look Everywhere adder, so if you don't really understand this XNOR and you want to know more about it, well, actually it's a pretty straightforward XNOR, so I can actually probably explain that right here now. So one moment after I finish this. Okay, so that's the e AND gate right here, and that goes into this torch, so there's the AND, and this right here is the NOR. It takes in both inputs here, there's an OR, and then it inverts it. So, AND, OR, NOR. There's an XOR, or XNOR. If you don't know that that makes an XNOR, you might want to look more into logic gates before watching the rest of this video. And this wire right here, that's just for the NAND, so I can use that 
for the generate calculation later on. After I invert that, of course. Well, yeah. And as you can see, I already built it off-screen over there, but I just wanted to show you how to build it in case you wanted to know the exact design I was using. Off-topic pro tip. Drinking water does wonders for your voice. <laughs> but anyways, so now that I've got my system order set up, let's go ahead and just start implementing a basic carry look everywhere adder. So I'm going to just, based on this chart, create carry zero. And as you see, that's just generate zero. So this is generate zero. So I'm going to take this and there's my carry. So, I've got my first carry already done. And, as you see, it's working just like it should. Now, next up, this is propagate 1 and generate 0, or generate 1. So, I'm going to move forward a little bit to give this a little bit of room. And did I move too far? Um, hmm. That should be okay. So... Let's go here, and there we go. That's generate one going there. So I should be able to create a carry signal by doing like that. And in case you're wondering, these aren't going to be the final carry wires. This is just, for example, to show you the logic. Well, maybe it will be. Depends on how I do it. So there. But we have one more term. We have propagate one and generate zero. Now, we're going to want to evaluate that at the same time and while reusing some, this information as much as possible. So in order to reuse this, I'm going to use a piece of glowstone. That way, anything I do to this wire doesn't affect that, well, that torch right there. And this way, I can do this. So I could do something with this wire, say, maybe make this torch and maybe I could do some logic with that, and it won't travel backwards and affect my previous one. So, and this is probably the most common way of implementing a carry look everywhere adder by using glowstone, or, well, you know, instant diodes, but, yeah. Now, of course, this isn't complete yet, because if I generate a carry, say, right here, it generates a carry there, and that's not right. I still need to take into account this propagate. So propagate 1 and generate 0. Now propagate 1 is when this is turned off. So when this is off, I want... well, I should do it backwards. When this is on, I want this to turn on. So I'm gonna use a bit of a... oh, what's it called? Well, a repeater, <laughs> I guess. I, I, this sort of technique where I do this. And actually, could I do that the other way? Not effectively, no. Okay. Just checking. So yeah. This way, it, it acts as sort of the AND gate. When this turns off, so I get propagate 1. And when this turns off, so I get generate 0. Then this torch will turn on. That implements that logic exactly. And... Yeah, just so you, I can propagate over. It implements the logic in the carry look ahead tree exactly. And it's still calculating these carries at the same time, and it's reusing previous data as much as it can. So this is true carry look everywhere fashion right here. Now, things are going to get a little bit more interesting in carry, or yeah, carry number two. So carry zero, carry one, carry two. So, first off, just like the previous two, there's the generate itself. So, if I get a generate from this bit, just like I saw so over there, I'll, I'll show you just, just because, generate 2, see? So I can use generate 2, and if I get that, then there you go. There's one possible carry. Now, over here, I have propagate 2 and generate 1. Now, we had a similar problem with our first one over here, so I'm just going to implement the exact same solution. I'm going to first off use a bit of a diode right here, 
to prevent anything I do to this wire from going backwards. And there. So this is taking, right now, just taking into account generate 1. And I also want to take into account propagate 2. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And there. So there you go. There's propagate 2 and generate 1. Exact same way I did it before. So right now, I could do something like generate this and propagate it over. And there you go. But what if I want to generate something right here on this bit and propagate it all the way over? Now, in order to do this, according to this, I need propagate 2 and propagate 1 and generate 0. Now, so now, I could do something interesting with these propagate wires, but there's a better way. Because what does this wire right here represent, this torch? Propagate 1 and generate 0. So I'm just going to, in true carry look everywhere fashion, reuse that again. This already has propagate 1, and I'm just going to do that exact same diode trick. And now I'm going to include propagate 2 in here. So I have to have propagate 2 and propagate 1 off for it to travel all the way over to that bit. And if I turn that propagate off, as you see, it can't reach anymore because Sure, propagate 1 and generate 0 are off, but propagate 2 is still on, so it can't travel any further. And this is probably the most common pattern of implementing a Carry Look Everywhere adder. There are certainly other ones, but most, most of them do it like this, with just a sort of glowstone pattern. And just to sort of finish things off, I'll go ahead and do the last bit. So, in case you didn't see this coming, we're going to use the generate directly from there, just like in all the other instances, and I'm going to go ahead and create the wire. And there. So, there you go. I'm going to use that. For this one, I'm going to use the diode to prevent it from going backwards. And the logic right here is generate 2 and propagate 3. So, this is propagate 3. That's generate 2 right now. So I'm going to take propagate 3. And this might actually not reach, but oh well. It's just an example. This definitely is not the ideal carry look everywhere implementation. Oh no, it does reach. So yeah. So now, generate 3 and propagate 2. So there you go, just like in that. Next term is propagate 3 and propagate 2, and generate 1. So, right here, I have propagate 2 and generate 1, so I'm just going to reuse that. So propagate 2 and generate 1, and propagate 3. So, there you go. And now it's implemented, well, now it's implemented that part. And finally, there's only one part of this left. Propagate 3, propagate 2, propagate 1, and generate 0. What if I propagate something all the way over? And if I do this, I'm just going to reuse the previous data just like before, and I'm going to include the final propagate. So propagate, this already has propagate 2, and propagate 1, and generate 0. And now I'm going to include, oh, well, I'll eventually have some repeat eater logic or something fancy there, but now I'm going to include propagate 3 into the mix. So propagate 3, and propagate 2, and propagate 1, and generate 0. So that fully implements the carry look ahead equation while reusing calculations and data as much as possible and not introducing any delay. So, now that we have the carry logic done, there's really nothing else fancy to carry look everywhere edition. We're going to plug the carries and the XNORs into an XNOR gate, and that's going to give us the final result of the addition. So after this point, it's really just a typical adder. 
I'm going to go ahead and build it anyways, just in case you want to see how this whole thing turns out. But, yeah, the, the carry is really the only tricky part. So to, to make this into a full working adder, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this XNOR just a little bit. I'm going to not do that, but I'm going to move this out by one block, just so that it reaches all the way to the end now. And, with that done, I've mysteriously started... Okay, never mind. But, now I'm going to go ahead and start connecting these carries to their respective carry outs. So, this one, I'm going to have it go over my... Well, carry lines over here. And this is going to go all the way over here into whatever XNOR I built. And the appropriate carry for this propagate should be this first one right here. So I'm going to get make that one go down under all the other carries. And I'm going to have that be sort of the way this works, I suppose. And just to see if that reaches. Oh yeah. And I'm going to see how much reach I actually have with this. So I'm going to go up a little bit. And that, yeah. I'll go ahead and build it here. It really doesn't matter too much the way you... Oh, I left chat on. Whoops. It really doesn't matter too much how you connect these, but, you know, just as long as they're connected in an XNOR gate. It's just like any other adder you might finish. I'm just going to do it like this, because, you know, I feel like it. So, yeah. And I'm not going to run you over, am I? No, doesn't look like it. Excellent. So there. And now, using the power of world edit, I'm going to copy. And stack one. And stack two. And that should give me all the outputs for my XNORs. So now I just need to connect this in, which is probably going to need a repeater, but that's okay. And... yeah. That's okay, I'm actually going to put this on a two-tick repeater, because I'm pretty sure that's what it needs to be if I want this thing to be synced. So, yeah. And one, two... Yeah, everything should be appropriately synced with a two-tick repeater. So, there. There's that. And this I'm going to have going over. Going to go down here. Just, just going to mash them up, because I'm OCD like that. And, yeah. Again, at this point, it's really just filling out a typical adder. I'm building it, so you see it, but... Yeah, I want this... There we go, much better. So that is connected, and... Oh, right. Don't want that. So just going to go ahead and connect the last two. They should be significantly easier because they're... They mostly have wires already there, but... Yeah. And almost done. Again, if you really want to stop watching the video now, you probably can. I mean, I covered the core part of Carry Like Everywhere Edition, but just for those people who are curious, this is how you make a working adder out of it. And... yeah, there we go. So, there. That's connected all the XNOR propagates into our final output XNOR. Just need to combine those with all the carries now. And they all should reach if that one reached. So, I'm going to do the exact same process to get them over to the output. There. And there. And the last one's actually going to be the carryout. So yeah, there's there's the carryout. There, those are all the inputs. Let's do some addition. Let's add 5 plus 3. The same test I always do. So 5 plus 3 gets 8. And... You know, you probably could... Hmm. No, never mind. I'm thinking about this too much. Yeah, there you go. 
that gets 8, as you see, all of the carry wires have turned on and reached, which is good. That's what should happen. So it's propagated over to there. And with the XOR, that gets 8. So we've got proper carry, proper output. Let's add 4 plus 12. This should overflow. Yes, it gets me no output and the carry out. So, excellent. There you go. That's how you build a working carry look everywhere adder. And hope this was useful. This is definitely not the most optimal design, in case you couldn't tell by this being, you know, ridiculously long and such. But, yeah. This sort of prototype I have right here. Two ticks for the XNOR, two ticks there, and two ticks the outputs. So that's path of six ticks. If we go through here, two ticks. 1, 2, and then 2 ticks to the XNOR, so again, 6 ticks, it goes through the generate, 1, 2, through any of those, then 2 ticks through there again, 6 ticks. So this particular example adder I built is 6 ticks, which is pretty good for a pistonless adder, especially one that's mostly intended for example more than optimization. A well-optimized carry look everywhere adder can actually be extremely fast. In fact, you can get all this carry logic done in a single tick. And in fact, if you use separate NORs and hand NANDs, then you can actually do the entire set of carry logic at the same time as the first X NOR, and get essentially no delay whatsoever in the actual, you know, carry logic. So. Yeah, Carry Look Everywhere Edition is really, really good for performance. It makes really fast adders. They do end up being a little bit on the large side, but they really aren't that bad. So yeah, that's just about everything I want to do here.